Hello and welcome to the latest edition of Central Coast Newspapers Video News. Today we're joined by Mr David Harris, the uh, State Member for the Electorate of Wyong and also the Shadow Minister for the Central Coast. Welcome David and thank you thank for you joining you. us. Very good to be here. Um, I thought it might be interesting to start with um, finding out just a little bit about how you ended up in state politics the first time and then came back to it. Perhaps why, too? Yeah. Okay, yeah, well, I, I've been involved with um, local politics since I was about 12 years old. Uh, I grew up in Woiwoi, and there was on Blackwall Road, there's an old uh, brick garage which we were handing out how to votes for Barry Cohen, who was a friend of our family, a good friend of my grandfather, um, Duncan Chapman. And, uh, and so it sort of got into my blood a little bit. My aunt worked for... Uh, Tony Doyle and for um, Paul Lander and uh, Michael Lee and a few others. So I was sort of around politics all the time, although I didn't actually join uh, the Labor Party until I was 21 and uh, when I just started teaching, which would have been 1987, I think, from memory. And, uh, yeah, so um, I was sort of involved in the background, doing lots of things and... Then uh, I, we had uh, Paul Crittenden decided to retire uh, in Wyong and I got a phone call from uh, Grant McBride who said, mate, do you want to come down to Sydney and have a bit of a chat? And I said, oh, yeah. And I'd just started as principal at uh, Carry On, uh, which was at that time the biggest school on the coast. And, and so they said to me, are you interested? And I said, oh, I'm interested. And... Uh, then they, they said, OK, well, we need a, an answer in the next 24 hours. And I said, well, I've just got a new job, so, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm not real keen. I don't want to let the community down and all that sort of thing. And they told me that politics was uh, timing and opportunity and the time was right and uh, this was my only opportunity. So, <laughs> so I sort of, uh, yeah, so I then said, OK, nothing ventured, nothing gained. And... Uh, took it up, was elected. Uh, unfortunately, at the end of 16 years, so it was almost like the fall of the Roman Empire, mm. the, the, the great ages had been through and, and Labor on the downturn. 2011 election, everyone was swept away with the, the tidal wave, although I had the third lowest swing in the state, but it was still 9%, mm. and I was on 6.4%, so it wasn't enough to, to stay in, and I was encouraged to keep active in the background and I was appointed um, after a few months to the position at, at Point Clare, which I absolutely loved. Yeah. And then I had the same dilemma. They came back again they said, OK, it's time to nominate again. You've been doing all the work for the last four years. And I said, oh, I, don't, uh, I don't think I want to do it now because I'm enjoying school and you know we've had the funding for the upgrade at Point Clare and um, the staff there were great, the kids there were great. And uh, I had um, four or the five. The parents were pretty good too. The parents were good, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, and uh, I had um, four or five phone calls, a couple of meetings, uh, and I ended up uh, going to see John Robinson, who was leader at the time, and I said, look, John, I understand that you want a you know, fresh start and everything, so you don't want dead wood from the old days too much. And I said, so what's your opinion? You, is it, uh, do you think I can actually add something? And he said, well, um, you were one of the people who sort of worked hard for the community or whatever, and he said, uh, he said, I think you'd be good for the team because you've got some experience that a lot of the others don't have because we shrunk down to 20 members in the lower house. And, uh, and so he, um, he sort of said, yeah, I think you should do it. So I said yes, and as in, happens in politics, a month later he was gone. And we had the new leader, Luke, so I sort of thought, oh, did I do the right thing? But since I've been back, uh, I think if it's in your blood, you can't help yourself. And I've been very community-focused, so even in opposition, there's so many things you can work on. Does it feel a bit like Groundhog Day, though, when, you when you know, ten years after you started the fight against Waller at Two, you're still fighting Waller at Two, and um, so many years after um, the, the plan for the... Employment zone 
goes through, there's still no Warner Vale Town Centre. Is, is that frustrating? I, look, it, it is frustrating, but at the same time, like early this year, we had the great victory keeping uh, Wyong Hospital mm. um, fully public. Uh, a lot of these things, uh, the community doesn't have a voice. And so uh, I feel very strongly that, that as a local member, you have to be that voice. And sometimes it's tough because you get beaten up a bit. And I think I got referred to the Human Rights Commission at one stage over one particular issue. And, and uh, you know, I've always, I was brought up the right way. I have strong ethics. And I very strongly believe that, that in the community. And when you see things happening uh, that are you know, impacting adversely on the community, then they need someone to stand up and be their voice. And, that's what I've always done and uh, yeah, sometimes you wake up in the morning and you sort of shake your head and think, oh geez, we've got to go again. But uh, at the same time, if you, if you didn't and you gave up, then a lot of these things would just go through. So your electorate is, is um, not particularly affluent. Um, it's also got a, an incrementally increasing population um, and a lot of them are Sydney escapees looking for affordable housing. With that, they're also looking for employment or they're going to all be on that freight train to, to the CBD in Sydney. Uh, can you see those employment opportunities coming and where are they going to come from in your electorate? Okay, so I, I meet all the time with people who have land in the area and want to, want to put projects forward. Uh, they feel very frustrated at the moment that in many cases they're being held up. Uh, but there will be a lot of jobs coming. I think some of the developments that have been putting forward uh, are quite exciting. We had yesterday the, uh, the new private hospital uh, at um, Camel, the first sod was turned. Uh, and that, yeah. I, I'm looking for projects that are, that are real and that people actually have money and that they're doing it for the right reasons. And so, for example, when I sat down with the uh, private hospital after fighting so hard to keep uh, the public hospital in public hands, uh, they were able to demonstrate to me, they answered all my questions about how they, the services would complement each other, how it would attract uh, employment, how it would attract better doctors to the area that could work across the public and the, the private system. And so they were able to, to sell me on the idea. I've seen other ideas that, um, that seem to promise a lot, but there's no money. The people putting it forward uh, have no background in that area. Uh, and so the land sits vacant even after they get permission to go ahead and people are sick of that. Just one more question on the hospital and then we'll go to the, the vacant land. Um, so the re now that the public-private partnership is off the table, the redevelopment seems to have gone quiet. Yeah, no, it started. It started. Yeah, so, so why on the yeah, way? So they had to do the, the planning, then they had to uh, let the tender and they're now doing the... Uh, what they're calling the enabling works. So that means new, uh, new water mains, new gas mains, they've got to relocate the front car park around to the side. And so that work starts, and after this I'm meeting with the, the CEO of the local health district, right. uh, where I'll get a full briefing. But uh, it, it is the $10 million we're allocated in the budget out of the 200 million, mm -hmm. and it is now underway. So people will see uh, a whole lot of construction zone happening, and probably get in their way to a certain extent but uh, you can't just magically make things appear you've got to go through that pain and we've seen that with Gosford Hospital it's getting near the end of uh, its building and uh, and people see the, the long-term benefits of it. So you've been very vocal over a long period of time about um, the activation of, of the employment zone um, you've stated publicly that you've seen a lot of um, very appropriate employment and development opportunities, skipping over the top of Central Coast and going to Lake Macquarie in recent years. Last night, uh, the councillors put forward and, and yeah, um, resolved to not expand the Warner Vale Airport. Um, first of all, why do you think Wyong Council and then the administrator stuck to um, the bureaucracy's plan to, to build a regional airport even though everyone was telling them, including the state government, that it was a bad idea. And secondly, how now does the council go about activating that land? Yeah, okay. So on the first issue, 
I think, yeah, I don't want to be critical of the staff, but I think in a lot of cases they were looking for a, a silver bullet solution. So they thought if we do this, it will solve all of our problems. And unfortunately, uh, that doesn't happen. Uh, what we've seen with Lake Macquarie is that they actually go out and, uh, and hunt businesses down and actually sit down and talk to them and say why you should be located in our area. Um, part of the problem we've had with Warnervale is that because uh, the bio certification wasn't done, um, that developers were told infrastructure wasn't coming for another 23 years in one case. Uh, they sort of went through their hands in the air and, uh, and just went further north where they, were, they felt more welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the feedback I get from Lake Macquarie Council as well as uh, from those proponents as well. It's great now Brian Bell's here, he was at Lake Macquarie, so hopefully that'll bring a different approach. Mm -hmm. uh, and whoever the, the long-term CEO is, is more focused on actually opening up the land. And as I said, there's investors out there that are ready with projects. I've seen four uh, DAs, uh, two of them quite well advanced, that seem to be hitting hurdle after hurdle after hurdle. And uh, you know, council's job shouldn't be to be a developer, council's job should be as an enabler. And so making sure that there is uh, funding allocated for things like sewerage and water. Uh, one of the things that astound me, and I know uh, Scott McDonald as well, is the council hadn't applied for any grants uh, under the Housing Acceleration Fund, which is to pay for those sorts of things. Right. And so if there is federal money and state money available, and it's going to northwest and southwestern Sydney, uh, and to the Hunter, then why isn't it coming to the Central Coast? And I think residents who are taking the pain of their roads falling apart, no curb and guttering, they're getting lots of extra houses, but they're not getting that other infrastructure, have the right to ask those questions as well. And it's my job to, to uh, ask the hard questions. It's also my job, uh, if, if we gain government in 2019, I'll be uh, having to answer the hard questions. So, there you go. It's no use sticking your head up there and uh, in opposition, you've got to be prepared in government to actually work on solutions. What do you think of, in your role as Shadow Minister of the Central Coast, what do you think of um, the Central Coast Regional Plan 2036? And would it be a template that you'd stick with if you became the Minister for the Central Coast? Well, look, the Central Coast has seen a lot of plans. I think it's been 10, 10 plans in 12 years or something like that. Um, one of the problems is we have to actually get a plan and stick to it. Uh, mm -hmm. Because when it changes all the time, it sends signals and often the wrong signals to people. Um, we have to say what land needs to be conserved and what land needs to be developed so that everybody knows what the rules are. Um, at the moment we have a lot of spot rezonings and things going on all over the place. Residents uh, get apprehensive about that because they were led to believe when they moved that certain bushland was always going to be preserved and next thing they're being told it's going to be developed and, and that creates consternation in the community. So the Central Coast plan is good as long as people actually stick to it and actually do what it says. Uh, I, I tend to think the population targets are probably a bit high, but plans are always aspirational, so um, whether we reach that or not will be determined. But the main thing you have to do is keep that job growth up with uh, the actual rate of um, population growth. And, and that plan doesn't do that? Well, it doesn't actually name infrastructure, um, which is always frustrating, but Government's working four year cycles, so you, you're very rarely going to get commitments um, past that because um, often they can't deliver it. And a good example of that is the Warnervale Town Centre, which has been promised since 1975. Well, what they tell you is, oh, well, the population's never actually grown to the point where we need it yet, same as the railway station. Uh, now the houses and things are growing, we are getting closer and closer, but people had the expectation all those years ago that was going to be done tomorrow. Mm. And so sometimes in government, if you build false expectation, you, you actually create your own problems. So we know what we need to do, uh, and it needs to be rolled out based on uh, demography. So next week we've got a meeting with the Department of Education about a new school at Warnerbar, right. um, which is great. High school or primary school? Because okay. there was a bit of confusion earlier on yeah. about that. Yeah, so the community, community had been pushing very hard for a new high school. Mm -hmm. uh, the department uh, and the demographers uh, have been developing a model for 
primary and secondary education in the whole area. They will put that to people uh, next week. Uh, and people might then say, accept that, yes, a different model might be acceptable. Uh, the trouble was, when they made the announcement, they hadn't spoken to anyone. And so, again, you just come out, you don't do the proper consultation. Um, I, I probably think this meeting should have been held before they made the announcement. Uh, it's sort of the chicken and the egg type thing. So, um, the, ju Just one more question on, on the regional plan. Resource extraction. Um, d how, how well does that mesh with major population growth? And um, development west of the M1. Yeah. What's your position yeah. on those two yeah. issues? So you've got to be really careful. So there's mining all across the northern part of the Central Coast. It's been there for a long, long time. Uh, we've only had one relatively big disaster, which was at Chain Valley Bay, where, where the mine collapsed and all the foreshore collapsed into, uh, into the lake. Um, and a lot of people's houses were damaged. But, but generally, you know, mining hasn't been too bad there. It's created jobs, it's, that's fueled the power stations. However, it goes back to what I said earlier, is that you've got to say that some places you do not develop. And our water catchment is very small, very precious, and if that's impacted, it then impacts on everybody. Mm -hmm. So uh, my position's always been, like when they announced the Mandalong mine, uh, there was virtually no opposition from the Central Coast. Uh, but with Wallara, there has been a lot of opposition simply because of where it is and, and the importance of that area. So I think people have to make that distinction. Uh, I personally think coal is on its way out, uh, that renewables will be the way of the future. Um, even the people who bought the power stations realise that because they're shutting them down. Mm. Uh, and if they were really viable and, and we get the solution, they would have kept them running. So, um, so we know that that, that transition is happening. Um, I think we, as governments, we should have transition plans at the moment, pretty hit and miss. Uh, and we should have that transition plan to move from uh, the old uh, uh, coal fired power stations to the newer renewables and how those jobs are going to pan out. Uh, in terms of west of the freeway, I, I'm a strong believer that the Central Coast can have a very strong agricultural future. Uh, and there are a lot of people doing a lot of work at the moment about developing food sciences here on the coast. Uh, I was at Warren High School last night and the principal there was telling us about the partnerships they've got with Mars and Sanitarium and teaching uh, you know, the students about uh, all that food science and healthy eating and all that sort of thing. So I think that's actually a niche industry that's, that's clean, uh, that can bring uh, income and create jobs. Mm. It's the sort of thing we should be pursuing. Now, if we just go to a plan that says, let's put housing everywhere, uh, after a while, like uh, northwest and southwest in Sydney, you create more traffic on the roads. Uh, public transport's harder to build after the houses go in, so you create more problems there. So we, sh we need to be more strategic about our thinking. And for example, up in the Summersby area with the people in the plateau, um, I've been looking at a model in uh, Holland, uh, which is called a regen village, which is actually a, a different way of zoning where you have a communal living and where everybody operates agriculture around that and it has renewable energy and all those sorts of things. And why shouldn't we be looking mm -hmm. at models like that? Uh, it's, that's the way of the future. Uh, if they can do it in Europe, they're doing it in the US, we should be able to do it here. Uh, but unfortunately, sometimes our thinking is too insular and we just keep doing the same things we've always done because that's what we know. Rather